everybody and welcome back to another great edition okay um welcome to Gru, and thank you so much for taking time out of your night and coming on the show buddy thanks for having me good to be here thank you thank you i appreciate that so like the first thing i want to start out asking you because i didn't want to screw it up like i i know how to say sean but <laughs> everything after that i just <laughs> you are not the only person ever in the history of my name to ask how so sean <laughs> middle name is eve y-v-e-s like eve saint laurent if you will and then last name is lassard so sean eve lassard Okay, look, the the middle name is what I got confused with. I I, I was like, how do I say this? I don't want to say it wrong. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, the first thing I wanted to ask you is like, what what drew you to want to act? Ooh, so I actually was a, a gymnast first. Uh, oh that, wow, that was my life's goal and passion and and all of it, and then. Um, I had a really bad ankle and foot injury that kind of sidelined that dream. And oh. in, in recovery of that, um, I was babysitting for one of our neighbors and uh, he asked me to run lines for an audition that he had for a play in, in our hometown. And um, I went with him. He asked me to read on stage with him because he was nervous. So he, I, I went up on stage, read the scene with him and they cast me in the play. Oh, wow. That poor kid didn't get cast. Oh, no. <laughs> but it was like a little hometown thing. But then it, I got bit by the bug, um, and then I couldn't stop. Nice. So, so like, you started out doing, doing plays beef, before you got involved with, like, film and television. Oh, yeah. I was a, a big musical theater nerd, if you will. Wow. Which, which music? theater play like do you do you have the most the most fun doing Ooh, uh well right before the pandemic um i was doing rock of ages oh yeah that show is just unapologetically fun like you can't oh, yes. you can't come to that show as a performer or an audience member and have a bad time like you just can't do it um i think my favorite show that i've ever done is uh it's called The Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. Um, oh. Did that. That's probably my favorite show just for my heart and soul, but my the, the most fun was uh, Rock of Ages. Oh, wow. Nice. So I I take it you're like a big fan of like rock, rock and roll because I think I saw a picture of you with Brett Michaels from Poison. <laughs> yeah, we were doing a press event for uh, for the Rock of Ages production, and I oh, had okay. no so the character I played in the show is based on Brett Michaels, oh, and I had nice. no idea that I was going to be meeting him that night. So we're all hanging out, kind of in the green room area, and he walks in, and I was like. <laughs> I'm dressed head to toe like <laughs> Brett Michaels. And I was like, do I go up to him and say hi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm happy I did. And uh, and then he ended up coming to the show, which was great too. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. He's like, you look more like Brett Michaels than I do. <laughs> I was like, that's not possible, but I thank you. <laughs> yeah, Poison's great though. Like I love their music. Oh yeah. Any, honestly, any, that show in particular just had kind of the, the best of what kind of commercial rock had to offer from the eighties. Nice, it nice. was so much fun. Oh man. That, that definitely sounds a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> so outside of theater, like what was, what was like your very first role in either in film or television? Oh, so my first actual role uh it didn't happen until i was like way late i was um it was just about a year ago uh, oh wow I, I booked my first tv role um on the show called heartland that oh yeah. yeah yeah it's a big canadian show but it kind of has permeated the uh the streaming platforms across the world which is exactly. kind of super cool actually um but yeah no i uh, after the pandemic or during the pandemic the show that i was in rock of ages closed and it wasn't going to be reopening um, and so I had to kind of recalibrate the, the career 
and figure out what I really wanted to do. And that was film TV. So I reached out to um, a couple of agents and managers in Vancouver because I knew that's where everything was filming and signed with a new team, moved up to Vancouver. And within a few months, I was uh, on Heartland. That was my first gig and, and started the ball rolling. Wow. And how was it like playing your very first role as Evan on this big show? It was incredible. So it was the softest place to land. It really was. The okay. entire crew, cast, production team, everybody on that show really welcomed me with open arms. They were kind and genuine. Um, and Amber, who's the number one on the show, yeah, she. I remember I was so nervous, so nervous for my first day. I was in my trailer. And she came over. She's been doing the show for 15 years. She's an executive producer. She is the lead of the series. She comes over, knocks on my door, and we have a you know 20 minute conversation before oh, yes. I go out to shoot my first scene. And and then I shot for a couple months um, with everybody, so I got to meet most of the people on the show. And it was probably one of the best experiences I've had. It was formative. Like I will remember that for the rest of my life. Um, and so I will no matter how big my career gets or how mediocre it is or anything, I would go <laughs> back to that show no matter what circumstance because they treated me so wonderfully for my first time out. Oh, okay, okay. And I have to ask, like, how was it doing a big move like that, like living in New, New York and then you move to, ca to Canada and I, I mean, New York is like where a lot of people go at to do mm -hmm. film and television. But did you think you would have a better experience in Canada? Yeah. So the industry has changed so much over the last oh, okay. 10 years. Um, and so much of what is filmed, films in Vancouver um, or in uh, some of the other Canadian provinces as well. Um, and so I'm a dual citizen. My father's Canadian, but my mom is American. So oh, nice. like, well, let's, let's take advantage of that and um, kind of try and work around the system that currently exists. <laughs> and it really, oops, sorry, you're going to get a uh, first view of the sirens coming out. I live above the firehouse, so I should have started. Okay, it's all good. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I got up to Canada and I fell in love with it. Like, I, it was kind of an experiment. To come up and see if I'm able to book anything and work mm -hmm. and all that stuff, and it worked. And uh, I, yeah, fell in love with the city, so I decided to stay. Wow, nice. Okay, okay. And I saw like you've done some some short some some shoots, photo shoots, mm -hmm. and I know photo shoots like they they take you all all over the place did you have any specific like place you loved visiting while you were doing doing shoots Ooh, that's a good question um you know because most of the shoots i've ever done for the most part were in studios um oh okay so i would say of all the shooting i've done both modeling film tv all that jazz i think the it was, it's a tie between Heartland and Reginald, the vampire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Heartland, we shot right at the base of the Rocky Mountains in Calgary in Canada. Oh, and that's awesome. These vistas with the mountain views, like you can't, yeah. it was stunning. Like just out of control. And oh, then, that sounds nice. Yeah, it was. And then for Reginald, we shot on Vancouver Island um, and the ferry, to get from Vancouver to Vancouver Island is stunning. And shooting in Victoria, shooting in all these cool locations, like it, yeah, that's a tie. Like you get ocean on this side, mountains on this side. So it's a tie. Wow, okay, okay. And speaking of that show, Reginald, like Reginald, the van, the van, van Empire, how did you get to be part of? of this show? Um, so I actually auditioned um, for the first time for a different role 
uh, oh. which was Mike Choi, um, who I think at that point, I didn't know, they didn't, I don't know if they knew um, kind of what race, ethnicity, any of the characters were going to be until they kind of gotcha. saw who they liked and, you know, and um, so the character ended up being Mike Choi, who's played by Ryan Jin, who is just incredible. Um, but uh, auditioned for that, sent that in, didn't hear, which is normal, you know, you yeah. just audition and kind of leave it alone. Um, and then a friend of mine, uh, he was a theater casting director um, and I didn't know that he had made the move to TV and film, but he mm -hmm. saw that I had done Heartland and he reached out to me and he was like, I'm actually working for NBC Universal. Um, can you send me your stuff? I was like, mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Like that's random. Um, and then I got a call from my agent uh, saying that they wanted to see me again for Reginald the Vampire for a different role. Oh, and uh and yeah, so I auditioned for that. And probably about a week later, I got the call that I booked it. And I guess the rest is history, as they say. Oh, wow. Okay, nice, nice. And, you know, for, for anyone who has who don't know about this show, like, it, it, it's, it's definitely like a horror comedy. Like, it's not a typical, like, scary van, vampire horror harsh series like interview with the vampire or something like that like it's it's more like horror mixed with funniness and um how do you feel uh about the uh, about the show the show the show looks like it's a lot of fun i had the most <laughs> incredible five months filming the show um not only is the writing funny and quick and witty and interesting. Um, Harley Payton, who wrote the show, is just a genius. And it's based on the book series called Fat Vampire. Um, so Harley adapted that. Uh, but the actors are, so it's, it's one part of the puzzle, right? To have a script that's funny. The other yeah. part of the puzzle is having actors who can do it justice and then some. And we lucked out so wonderfully with this incredible cast of characters. Um, I mean, uh, Aaron Buckles is so just painfully funny. Um, and so is Jacob Babylon. He's yeah. incredible. Uh, Savannah, who is, uh, she plays Angela on the show. Mm -hmm. Now her character is not meant to be funny. She is vicious, she is terrifying, she is all these things. But when that camera turned off, Oh my gosh, that, she is, she's, she's, she's what I call sneak attack because okay. you don't think that what's going to come out of her mouth is going to come out of her mouth until it does. Oh and God. then you are just crying, laughing. Um, one of my favorite people on the show is uh, Georgia, Georgia Scarlet Waters. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. she plays kind of like my, uh, the Rosencrantz to my Guildenstern. She is this, um, just force to be reckoned with. Uh, and she's so funny, and but she doesn't think she is, which makes her so much funnier. So yeah, if you blend a great script with, with great comedic actors, you're really in for a lot of fun. Oh, definitely, for sure. And, and like I said, like watching, watching, watching some of it, like I, I, I could see how much fun it is. Like, I, you, you know, you could just, just just tell when the cast is having fun just by watching the show yeah and we did we had a lot of fun <laughs> nice and for for any fan who hasn't seen it can you tell us a little bit about who who you play on the show sure so i well since i'm trying to think of like how i can avoid this okay so i <laughs> i play a character named lebron um more to come as the series progresses uh, mm -hmm. specifically on that. Um, but he is, I think, meant to be this vicious, um, uh, very, very bigoted uh, vampire. Because the world is, uh, the world of vampires is meant to be populated by beautiful, intelligent, uh, can't say people, vampires. Oh, this was yeah. The most beautiful, the most intelligent, the yeah. most worldly, the most educated, all these things. And, uh, and he prides himself, LeBron prides himself on being beautiful, mm -hmm. on being 
you know, smart. And I, I, I use air quotes on purpose. Um, and so when Reginald is turned into a vampire who is this, you know, short, overweight, um, you know, supposedly unattractive guy gets turned into this vampire, LeBron in particular is so deeply offended by that, um, which I just think is hilarious. <laughs> It's just hilarious uh, the way he deals with it. Um, but yeah, and he ends up being just the lapdog uh, of Angela. And um, he is painfully stupid, but has no idea that he is, <laughs> which I love. Oh my God, that's great. <laughs> he's a lot of fun, I will say that. Nice. And um, I, I... Of course, without giving a lot away, um, was there any scene you liked filming the most? Yes, like hands down. Um, well, let me ask when when are you going to post this? Uh, probably tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, amazing. Yeah, uh, hold on. No, it airs on Wednesday. Ooh. Oh, well, I mean, I could post it Thursday, Thursday then. Okay. If you can post this Thursday, yeah, I can say what my favorite stuff. Okay, is. Um, uh, I, I I I swear I'll post it either on okay. Thursday or Friday. So my favorite <laughs> scene that I filmed is uh, uh, the scene <laughs> where it, it involves projectile vomit. Let's just say that. And uh, so Reginald, we find out is has the ability to glamour other vampires, which no vampires ever had the ability to do they can glamour humans but they can't buy glamour vampires reginald can glamour vampires and he can control them to do exactly what he wants what he wants so he's on his first date with uh sarah and um penelope and i georgia and myself walk in and are trying to just screw up his life if you will and he glamours us and we end up getting on the table with all, at this restaurant, public restaurant, with all of our food. And she gets up on the table, grabs the food. She's shoving it in my oh face, my down my shirt, like all of it. She sits on my lap and then she projectile vomits all over me. And then oh in turn, God. I projectile vomit all over her. Now, I have not seen the cut of that scene, so I don't know how much of that actually is going to make it to air because it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a sensitive thing. Um, but we got rigged with these machines on the sides of our face uh, away from camera. And so when it was time to vomit, they give you the cue and you put the vomit and it shoots out. And she and I, I have videos and pictures. We were covered in this goo that they created out of like corn and v8 juice and oh my god uh, yeah all this crazy stuff um <laughs> and we were covered in it and like it was the craziest scene to film and we only got one take like that was what was crazy really that was it we got one take yeah wow, it would have taken god. hours to get reset and i mean hours so yeah that's the best. And that airs uh, uh, on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Uh, okay. That, I, I mean, wow. Like no pressure or anything, right? Like one, you have to get that right on the one take. Oh yeah. And we, <laughs> I don't know if I would have wanted to do it again. Yeah, true. The stuff that they made was so realistic. It even smelled like it. Oh like, no. Like, oh. Hey, our, our set deck and props team and hair makeup, they are incredible at what they do. And um, it shows. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and um, where, where did you guys film? film I mean, I know you filmed in, in Canada, but like yeah. where, like what, what areas? So we filmed uh, all over Victoria, um, which is a city uh, at the tip of Vancouver Island. Uh, mm -hmm. And we filmed in, a, in different locations on Vancouver Island, but primarily around Victoria. Oh, wow. Yeah. So if, if, for the audience, if anyone's been to Victoria and you watch the show, you'll, be, you'll see some little landmarks and some things. You're like, oh, that's Victoria for sure. 
Nice, nice. And and how how was work on the set like? Oh, so great. Um, uh, most of the stuff that I had to film was on location, so I was okay. never. Yeah, I was only in the studio once. Um, everything else was on location. So like Angela's house is this incredible Tudor mansion on the island. It is huge and beautiful. Um, and like being on set itself, like we got to, you know, cause it's a lot of hurry up and wait on a film set. So you're hanging out in the green room for like an hour and a half before everything is set and they're ready to go. Yeah. And um, the team was such a well-oiled team. Um, and it was, yeah, everything was like clockwork. Um, we had a really, really great time. And because it was like clockwork, the cast could just have fun, which is great. So like, what are some things you like doing be, be, be between takes? Like stuff you like doing just for like fun or to kill time or? Well, uh, if it's cold, we dance. <laughs> A um, lot of dancing. I also just dance. If like, if anything ever gets tense, which it never really did, but like, yeah. if anything ever gets awkward, I just start like, like boogieing, like this, just to break. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah, we would just chat um, as long as we weren't being disruptive to like. Well, yeah, process, obviously. Um, but for the most part, if if we were cutting for a significant amount of time, then we'd go back to the green room. But in between takes, we would just like the actors would just chat and then let the you know director or DP or first AD or whatever kind of mold us and talk to us and stuff like that. But um, yeah, just like little passing jokes here and there. That's basically okay. It. Sweet, sweet. And you also filmed a film called wife wife like mm -hmm. and how was that experience like that was awesome because so that was my first experience with green screen uh, oh really yeah which i found fascinating um and i on my scene partner elena Camporis, she's the lead of the film um and jonathan reese myers as well but i got to play an ai which is the coolest thing. Oh, that's awesome. Um, nice. It ended up being this kind of really cool film about um, not only female empowerment, um, mm -hmm. but the concept around marginalized groups. So like these, these women are created, um, you know, in the likeness of a woman in these men's lives who they would like to recreate in, in the image, you know, that they want created. Um, and they kind of create an uprising. Um, they are autonomous people. They have their own opinions, their own beliefs, just because they are technically machines yeah. you know, does not mean that they can't think and feel and, you know, adapt. And, um, so basically they create a, a revolution, um, around really just the concept of, of, uh, bodily autonomy and freedom and, and all these things, which are all super relevant right now. And um, yeah, and Elena Kamporis, she is, oh, that girl. Uh, not only does she speak Mandarin and Spanish and uh, smatterings of other languages, she oh my is God. bona fide genius, a yoga extraordinaire, kickboxer. Like she is the coolest chick. She's so cool. Um, and she just filmed, uh, what is it? Um, my Big Fat Greek Wedding or like the follow-up to My Big Fat Greek Wedding in Greece this, over the summer. And she looked like she had so much fun, but um, <laughs> I'm fingers crossed that we'll get a wife like sequel because I think we, I think we need one. All right, okay, okay. Because yeah, we kind of left it on a cliffhanger at the end of that movie. So, well, here's 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 hoping there is a part two to that. Fingers crossed. <laughs> and was there i always ask guests this, like was there any cool behind the scenes stories that happened while you were either filming wife lake or Re reginald hmm. oh, i think of anything <laughs> i mean it wasn't necessarily behind the scenes because it wasn't when we were working it was mm -hmm. and we had like a, a cast party oh um, nice because we couldn't um, have like a full-fledged 
uh, wrap party in the same way because of COVID protocols and, and yeah. all that stuff. Um, so we had to pare it down to really pretty much just cast and, um, and it was just the greatest time. So Jacob and M. Hine, who uh, she plays Sarah, uh, chipped in and Savannah did, and we all like chipped in to rent these Airbnbs and uh, and we rented a karaoke room and went oh, that's and awesome. and like, yeah, we had, that was probably the best experience because we all were just, we could let our hair down because we we're almost done filming. Yeah. And, um, they, yeah, it was a chance for us to actually engage truly just as people, as opposed to actors at work. It was, that's true. it was a blast. It was a blast. Okay. So I have to ask this. What is your go-to karaoke song? <laughs> it's hard because i uh i'm a professional singer so i it, for me going up and belting out a tune at karaoke if you're a professional singer it's like well these people want to come and have a good time they don't want to you know like oh you're such a dick like you you know you can sing like why are you doing that blah, blah. but if i do sing oh don't make me sing don't make me sing um if i do sing it's uh normally queen um somebody to love oh that's a uh, good song or uh joan jett i hate myself for loving you oh um, yeah yeah those are my go-tos nice nice and um what do you like doing during your your free free time when you're not acting or auditioning yeah i uh god the list is long so i'll narrow <laughs> it um i love uh working out, love being physical, absolutely love that. It kind of became a habit when I was in college and then it just stuck and I just kind of just love working out, which is great. Um, I'm a huge reader. Um, oh. right now I'm reading a book about Greek mythology that I love. That's the other thing that I'm super into at the minute. Um, Greek mythology, I've done kind of my own self-study of it for the last okay. couple of years. And just understanding uh, the gods, the goddesses, um, the stories, the epics, and how those things intersect with mm -hmm. actual history and actual context and things like that. I'm obsessed with all of it. I think it's the coolest, coolest uh, part of our history. Um, I, what else do I like to do? Um, I'm obsessed with my, my nieces and my nephew. Like, okay. I think they're the like just the best things walking this earth. Well, two of them are walking, one not yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, they they just have completely. I'm enraptured by them. I I I owe them so much because they, you know, they kind of created um, a new version of me because I didn't realize I could love another person that much in that way like i yeah i love them they're like my whole world oh oh that's awesome and like i could tell you're in really really good shape like you say you like working out and being physical and do you follow like diets too because i mean obviously you're going you're working out a lot like uh, do you do you do you eat anything or do you follow like a? I um no. Yes and no. So it depends. Okay. Um, I have a terrible sweet tooth, like to the point where a pint of ice cream will not last longer than <laughs> five minutes if you put it in front of me. Um yeah, I have a serious sugar problem. Um, but if I have to get ready for a shoot or if I, like when I was doing Rock of Ages, um, mm -hmm. I was doing intermittent fasting. Oh, was, wow. Yeah, 16 hours off eating and then eight hours on eating, which is a lot easier than it sounds. It's like, oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Like if I eat my last meal at seven or eight o'clock, then I eat again at 11 or 12 the next day and then eat my last meal at seven or eight, you know, and then do the same thing all over again. So it was actually really easy, um, especially with the show, the show schedule. It was just easy to get that taken care of. Um, but for the most part, unless I'm getting ready for something, I eat pretty well-roundedly, like a lot of vegetables, a lot of protein. Um, but the bad side 
of my <laughs> dietary prowess is uh, is the sugar. Uh, okay, anyway, because anyway. of the sweet sweet tooth, right? Exactly. <laughs> So is that like your cheat food is like sweets? Yeah, uh, there's this uh, this flavor of Breyers ice cream called dark chocolate truffle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you take that, I, I get a jar of peanut butter and I take a scoop of peanut butter and I put it in the ice cream and I just go to town. And that's I, awesome. the jars of peanut butter that I get are large, they're big. And if I'm going back and forth with these two things, over the if I get like a gallon of ice cream and a huge jar of peanut butter, they're gone within like four days. Okay. <laughs> like, I just can't stop. Like so some people, when you get full, a little voice goes off in your head saying, hey, yeah. I, I should stop. And that voice yeah. doesn't exist for me. It doesn't exist. I have voices <laughs> in my head, but that's not one of them. <laughs> Well, you see, I guess that's why you go to the gym all the time because you, you know, you because of the sweet oh, tooth and the ice cream and the peanut butter. So once once you do that, you're probably at at the gym for like a couple of hours. Well, it's definitely got to be a balance, right? Like everything in life has to be. Yeah, exactly. If I'm gonna eat that much ice cream, I probably shouldn't just sit on the couch all day. <laughs> Sacrifices. Yeah, sure. <laughs> or I could just, you know, eat less ice cream. But I don't want to. <laughs> do do you do you play any any sports too? Or um I was a gymnast for a long time. It's not like playing sports. It is a sport, but, but um it, really it's just tennis is the only thing that I like I like to play and I'm competitive at. Um I kind of taught myself in a way. Um, and then two really good friends of mine, Peter and Garrett, uh, when I was living in LA, we would play like almost every week. Mm -hmm. Um, and I got pretty good. And then once I got pretty good, I liked it even more. <laughs> and so then I, I, I would challenge my friends to play every once in a while. So it, it's, that one is a good one because I'm competitive. With, okay. With that. Um, I also snowboard. I love to snowboard. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. That's for leisure. That's not really to compete. So awesome. Okay. And what about gaming? Are you a video game guy at all? I'm not a video gamer. I am I am nostalgically. So like when I was younger, N64 and yes, the original Genesis. PlayStation, Sega Genesis. Yes. So yes. I was a Sonic the Hedgehog guy from Sega Genesis. Yo. Um uh, from N64, GoldenEye, 007. Yeah, oh my God, yeah. I, right. I remember that game, yes. The Star Wars, when Star Wars did the reboot of the, the second three films, mm -hmm. um, they had a pod racing N64 game that I was yep. with. And then Pokemon Snap, if you remember Pokemon Snap. Yes, definitely, okay. definitely. Um, and then from PlayStation, the only stuff we'd play on PlayStation was Crash Bandicoot and oh my God, uh, yes. Frogger. Like they had a Frogger for it. And I was, we were obsessed with that. Um, and then also Super Smash Brothers and uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mario Kart. Everyone loves that game, Mario yeah. Kart. Everybody oh. loves that game. Like it's really, so all of the games are just nostalgic for me. I have friends yeah. like, one of my best friends, Michael Thomas Grant, who um, he was on uh, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, if you know that show. Um, but he does like these live twitches of his gaming. Yeah, yeah. And he is so invested in these worlds that I'm like, I have no idea <laughs> how you dedicate this much time and brain power. <laughs> I don't know. He's, I mean, he's incredibly smart anyway, but like so, in, so much investment these video games take. But I guess that would be similar to how much time I invest in, I don't know, uh, running in Greek mythology. Like it's just all about, you know, preferences. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, when it comes to nostalgia, uh, I will definitely sit down and play some Mario Kart or some nice. uh, some of Seven for sure. Oh man, yeah, I, yeah, that's such a fun game. It is. And 
I always ask guests this when I have them on because, uh, you know, as you could tell with Chucky in the background, I'm a big horror fan. Yeah. And since it's Halloween month, are what horror movies do you like to watch during Halloween month? Ooh. Okay, so I have the, again, nostalgic, uh, like, kid movies that I like to watch. So mm -hmm. Pocus Pocus, obviously. Um, Don't Look Under the Bed which was uh, oh my god i remember that movie yes actually a lot scarier than i remembered it like i just watched it a few <laughs> ago, and i was like whoa this is actually terrifying if you're a child oh my god um i love watching uh the original screen that i know you did last summer i think those movies are super cool they um, are and then halloween so i'm, I'm tonight i'm gonna watch uh halloween ends <laughs> uh, but I can't because I love uh, Laurie Strode. Like I love that story. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious to see how they're deciding to end it. Um, I mean, in my head, she, before I'm watching it, I'm assuming she's going to die and she's going to take him with her. Um, but like, I, I, I have to tell you the truth. I saw it and I wasn't a fan of that movie at all. I wasn't a fan of the one before this, like at all, because it was oh, so okay. like, oh, okay. let's, we're not going to let him take our town and let's get him. And I was like, this is the worst acting I've ever seen. Um, but like, you know, whatever. It was all nostalgia because they were bringing back characters well, from yeah. the two films and I get it. Um, yeah. But I, the only reason I'm going to see it is because I'm curious how they're going to end it. Okay. okay. And I love Halloween H2O. When I was a kid, that was great. I, I thought because I was I wasn't allowed to watch it. Yeah, I was just like, "Ooh, I'm gonna watch it," and oh, so cool. Love that. Actually, maybe I'll watch that before I watch the other one. Oh, all right, okay. I'll do that. Um, okay. And then I also I love um, American Horror Story uh, Coven. I think. Oh, that's, really that's cool. my favorite one of of the se of the the seasons. Yeah, same. Coven is Coven is my absolute best. Like I love that. I mean, just everything about it was great, and yeah. the how how they all played witches and Stevie Nicks was in it. And I know. <laughs> oh, Practical Magic too. That's an, it's not really horror, but like that's another good yeah. like Halloweenish. Is, is it um Bullock and that son? Sandra Bullock and Bullock, yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Love that one. I'm trying to think if there's anything other horror related. Oh, I love going back and watching um, like the Halloween episodes of shows I used to love, like the Boy yes, in the World Halloween episode and Sabrina the Teenage definitely. Witch episode. Yes. Like, oh my yeah. God. I love that series. Yes. Those are fun. <laughs> no, I oh, also, I know you, uh, not uh, 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 the Midnight Society. Um, oh, gosh. Don't mid, be afraid, don't be mid, afraid of the dark. Like mass? Oh, okay. Don't be afraid of the dark, which is it was on Nickelodeon years ago. Yeah. Um, and some of those episodes are terrifying. Oh, I know. Wow. I know. Oh, and I loved Haunting of Hill House, and then they ruined it. With yes. That, so, I'm so angry. Do you like the uh, goose goose uh, goosebumps and RL Stein's haunt? Oh yeah. I used to have like a haunting hour, haunting hour. I think was the other one, right? Yeah. So, and then of course, of course, stuff like Tales from the Crypt and Creep Show and all that. Oh, classic, 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 classic. Also, Twilight, Twilight Zone. Yes. Rose, Psycho. Um, I mean, I also love Hitchcock. So, The Birds. It was one of the first movies that I should not have seen. I think I was seven when I saw it because my grandfather had it on. Terrible influence, my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> now you say you sold Hocus Hocus Pocus. Did you see the second one yet? I did. Yeah, um, I was really disappointed. Uh, I they hit some nostalgic points that were cute, um, yeah. but the story. It just was lacking. I wish that it was more yeah. about the Sanderson sisters than it was. It was more about like these young girls and then, you know, I was like, no, I want to, I want go back to the sisters. Like I want to. Exactly. Exactly. Um, exactly. 
I'm happy they did it. I think that they shouldn't have waited this long because now they were trying so hard to be relevant mm-hmm. to today without understanding that the whole reason the sh- that movie is so important to people is because of the nostalgia. Oh yeah, of course. And like, I think they waited just a little too long. Like if they had done this five years ago with a it different- probably would have been a bigger hit. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Oh, well, it was still fun. And um, what about music? What kind of songs are on your playlist? Ooh, so much. Um, I'm trying to think of like the band names. I love uh, Heim. I love, uh, uh, love 2000s nostalgia. Again, yeah, yeah. I'm on the nostalgia kick. Um, I love right now, I'm listening to a lot of the band Ludo, if you know them. They're like, oh. a, as a horror person, you would love them. They, oh, really? They, their songs are, they're all thematic, and a lot of them are about Halloween or just spooky stuff. They have this great song called Skeletons on Parade, Lake Pontchartrain, they have these spooky towns, and they're oh, so really? the song. So cool. It's L-U-D-O. They are the coolest band. I love that. Oh, okay. I highly um, recommend them. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna listen to them. I love all the, all the haunted and horror stuff. Yeah, every October I pull out that playlist and I, it's on repeat. Um, I also uh, I just got introduced to uh, uh, this girl called Maisie Peters. She's she's super young, but she's a singer songwriter from the UK. She's brilliant. Nice. Um, really, I just put my so my on my itunes you can create your own radio station yeah yeah exactly it thinks you like um and a lot of them i skip let's be real um (laughs) but some of them i'm like oh yes this is exactly what i want to listen to right now um so that's really the playlist i listen to is just like sean's radio station (laughs) okay (laughs) nice and um is there anything coming up for you that you want to, I mean, are you allowed to talk about that you want to plug? Um, one, I can't, well, no, I can't talk about that. Um, <laughs> uh, honestly, Reginald, let's hope and pray that we get a second season. Um, I would love to be able to, at some point, announce that we have a second season. I don't know when. Yeah that will be or if it will be but i really really hope we do i think this show has a lot to say and i'm hopeful that we get a chance to say it okay and, um i'm really looking forward i'm going to europe uh next week and i i'll be there for a couple of weeks i'm very very excited about that oh that's awesome nice yeah and i get to go home for christmas and see my nieces and my nephew which i can't yes. wait. and then in the new year um some more projects coming up and i'm i'm really excited Oh wow, that's really that's really cool. Yeah. And lastly, like where can fans follow you at? Oh, you can really it's just Instagram um, at Sean Eve Lassard. Uh, I also have a TikTok that I don't. <laughs> I'm a terrible TikToker. I've had like a couple go viral, and then I forget to do any follow up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, oopsie. Um, so I'm on it occasionally, but then uh, apparently, according to, um, you know, uh, many people in the know, uh, mm-hmm. TikTok is very um, intrusive and invasive. So when you yeah. sign up for TikTok, they can, after you shut down your app, they literally can follow and track what you do on your phone. Yeah. Really? No joke. They can do that. And it's embedded within the code that they can like follow you and do all the stuff. So I, I was listening to a podcast about that and I was just like, oh crap, I'm going to delete my TikTok right now. So I deleted the app and not my account. So I'll probably get, go back on and be like, I don't care who, if they know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's a wow, they, they should make a horror movie about that, about the TikTokers that are watching you. That's not a bad idea. Somebody out there, <laughs> yeah. write that down. Well, <laughs> I want to thank thank you so much for coming on the show. It was it was really fun talking to you. Like 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 thanks thanks for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me. This was a blast. Anytime. Yeah, definitely. And this little guy wants to thank you. <laughs> there he is. This He's is, such a handsome little man. 
this is his buddy, and today is his uh, birth birthday. Oh, happy birthday, buddy! <laughs> He's so cute. Animals are yeah. cute. Dogs, they're like our children. They're just I know, know, right? Exactly. Love yeah, yeah, he's getting old. He's he's the big one four. Wow, you don't look a day over nine. <laughs> well, once again, thanks, thank, thanks for doing this. It was fun. It was fun. I had a chat. Time. Thanks for having me, man. Definitely, definitely. Well, have a good night and have a have a good rest rest of the week. Thank you. I'm gonna go watch uh, Halloween H two O. Yes, definitely. That I might actually watch that too. It's such a good throwback. I know, I know. I love that movie. All right. Well, you have a great night, and uh, and yeah, on Thursday I look forward to seeing this. I'm excited. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody, thank you. All right. Cheers. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>